pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from unto evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw that he did uh, saw that he did to the people, he said, "What is this thing that thou doest, the people? Why myself alone? All the people stand from morning unto evening." And Moses said unto his father-in-law, "Because the people come unto me to inquire of God, and when they have one and another." They do let them know the of God in his law. And Moses, his father in law, said to him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and the people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice, and I will give be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godly, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Thou shalt teach them ordinances in the way wherein they walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide of all of the people able men such as fear God. Men of truth hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself. And they shall... Bear the burden with thee. This thing, and God command thee, command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all of this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father in law and did all that he said. Father, thank you for my hands tonight to be an encouragement to. For we do need support. We do need to encourage. We do need people to share the burden, workload, uh, to encourage one another. So I pray tonight as we see the scripture, it be an encouragement, or maybe a challenge in our lives, that we would be willing to apply that in our lives. And may it be said here at Anchor Baptist Church that this is of people that truly have a, a vision to want to strengthen one another, strengthen us in the Lord. I pray that you bless. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Now, obviously, Moses is a man that is called of God, and he has a purpose. So what is that? That is to lead the nation of Israel. So Moses, if you think about it and you look at that, would be, quote, unquote, the president or the leader for that entire nation of Israel. So his calling, his job, his duty is to be able uh, to lead them. He's the one that's supposed to be teaching them the laws uh, and the ordinances from God, but he's also at the same time the one who's judging the matters or the, uh, let me say, the problems that pop up. He's the one that between the two will judge it, making the decisions for them. And he is not God called, but realize that God also provided for him first in the beginning. You remember when he was discussing those things and God gave him Aaron to be a help to him. So there was an expectation that he would not be by himself, but he would understand that God would provide and also use other people to provide for Moses throughout his time. And here is a situation where that popped up. And his father shows up on the scene, and he's watching all of these things happen, and he's watching and considering and watching, and then he confronts Moses. The father-in-law sees, recognizes that there's a situation. I'm not going to say that it was a flaw. I'm not going to say that it's even a mistake. He sees something in Moses that's happening, and he realizes that if Moses is to continue, he's going to wear out. Uh, you know, sometimes people today call that burnout. Sometimes 
pastor day say that they're involved too much and what happens is they get overwhelmed or they get so burdened that they decide to step out of that situation. I understand the context here is in service to the Lord. I understand that. But at the same time, I want to remind you that it's also when we're involved in situations in our life. Uh, there are many things that may happen or pop up in our life that we are not able ourselves to resolve. Need help and understand, I hope, that for the service of the Lord, we need help, right? It takes everyone to be involved for the church to operate. It takes everyone to be involved for the gospel to be spread. It takes everyone involved in the church to continue in the work of the Lord. It is not the responsibility of one person. God didn't design it that way. He didn't design it that way for Moses, okay? So Moses is there. He's doing what God's called him to do. He's being the leader. The father-in-law shows up, and we see that he recognizes there's something in Moses that he feels Moses needs help with. We find that in verse 14. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why stand thyself alone in all the people's stand by thee from morning into evening. So what's happening is all day long. So I don't know the time that Moses would get up. Let's just, for the sake of an illustration, say that he would get up at four in the morning, get his coffee, right? Prayer time, talk, communicate with the Lord. And then at six o'clock, he's sitting. And then the people are coming to him and coming to him and coming to him. He's making decisions and he's giving God's commandment and he's judging each of the people. And he does this all day to the evening. Let's just say that he sits uh, at that chair at 6, and maybe he stays all the way to 6 in the evening, 8 in the evening. When he gets done, goes back home, eats his meal, hits the rack, and gets up in the morning, and he does it again. The father-in-law looks at that and says, hey, if you continue that, wow. And not only are you yourself going to wear out, but these people also are going to wear out. So, for you to continue to do what God has called you to do, you need to understand that there is some help or some support that can be given. Now, I'm thankful that his father-in-law was attentive to what Moses was doing. There was no jealousy. There were some people before that had jealousy, and God punished them. Um, there was no looking for fame. There was no self-anything. He saw Moses and recognized he needed some support. Now, his father-in-law is going to give a suggestion, a way to help him. Now, Moses, now let me just show this. Wear out, verse 18. Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that thou doest is not good, and thou wilt surely wear out both and this people. That is, for this thing is too heavy, too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Okay? I know I said that before, but I want you to see the scripture itself. So Moses, if he continues, is going to wear out. So the father-in-law gives a suggestion. Maybe you can even say gives him some counsel. Moses to be able to get the help and the support that he needs. Just want to pause for a second. It would be good for us. And I'm not saying that we're being nosy. We're not being nosy. Um, we're not being intrusive. But it would be good for us to pay attention to one another. Trying to think of the best way to say this, right? We should be attentive to our, pay attention to or be attentive to our, our family. Understand that. Surely we're attentive to our friends. Understand that. But as a church body, we should be paying attention to what everyone is involved with, not because we're being nosy, not because we're jealous, but because we have a genuine, soft heart concern for one another. And we should be able, and maybe in a little, well, we, what do we call it? that? You're doing that, you're doing that, you're doing that, you're doing that, right? And we should be able to say, hey, if you continue this way, it's going to happen, right? I, I of that want to get involved in that ministry, involved in that ministry, and involved in that ministry. Hey, be careful that we don't stretch too thin, right? Because we also want to be uh, pay a special attention to the ministry that we're we want to be able to give 100% to the ministry that we're involved or with. 
And sometimes if we're involved in three, four, five, and then what we're going to do, we're going to cheat or short the other ministry. And God wouldn't want that. Right. Now, I understand there are times that we have to take on those things for uh, whatever different reasons. Maybe a person's sick or in the hospital or uh, on vacation or whatever that may be. I understand that. So I'm not saying, you know, don't take on extra. If there's a need for that, uh, yeah, we understand. Go ahead and take that on. But we should not want to be involved in that, involved in that, involved in that, involved in that. You understand what I'm saying? We should want to say, okay, Lord, you lead me to that right place, and I'm involved in that. Now, for those of us, I don't know the pop in as mature Christians, but attentive people should be watching and saying, hey, and give that warning. And we'll see here in just a minute, we should be humble enough to say, yeah, you're right. We should have a soft heart enough to say, you're right. So we should be able to come to that person and say, hey, you might be involved in just too much. Why don't you just pick one or two and focus on that? And what I'm trying to say is we should be kind of like this father-in-law here. As he's watching what Moses is doing, he's not critical. He's not rude. He's not mean. He presents him and says, hey, if you continue this thing, you're going to wear out. Let me give you a suggestion. And we'll see here in the Bible that it is a godly suggestion. It is not from man, but it is focused on biblical principles. So we need to be attentive to other people. Especially me as a pastor, I understand that. But it's also out of our job to be able to see those things and give that encouragement or that suggestion or counsel as needed. So it's good for us to notice and then offer a way of help. Can I say offer a solution? A lot of people that can provide um, critical problems. But what we want is people to say, hey, I see a situation here. Why don't you try this? Here's something that's happening. Why not try that, right? We don't just need people saying, well, that's wrong and that's wrong and you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't do that and that's it. Offer a resolution or a support or a solution. That's exactly what happens here uh, when Moses' father-in-law steps up. Can I just tell you, it is a way for us to strengthen, right? We should be doing that. We shouldn't be trying to excel and leave other people behind. We need to be encouraging and bringing people to know that we're at mature, uh, uh, spiritually mature, also in the service, right? We want to encourage one another. Listen, we never know when the other person's going to die, right? You never know when I'm going to die. We don't know when you're going to die. And if it happens, this church has to continue moving forward. So we can't just be dependent on one person. We need to be able to encourage and give the support we're and able to take up those ministries to be involved also. The only way that's going to happen is if we're going to strengthen the saints and encourage one another. All right? So Moses gives the suggestion or this counsel. And if we jump to verse 24, we see that he accepts it and he goes ahead and applies it. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. So the father-in-law here suggests something. Moses gives a suggestion and he accepts it and goes ahead and makes the application for it. Now I just want to say for just a minute, that took a humble individual. Moses is the God called man. Moses is what you're going to do. You're going to lead the nation of Israel. You're going to lead the exodus. You're going to receive the law. You're going to establish all of these things. Right? It would be easy, if I could say, that Moses would get a big head. It would be easy for Moses to say, I'm the man. But he's not. He's a very, the Bible calls him, the meekest man on the earth. Right? He understands the authority. He understands the responsibility. But at the same time, he's very humble and to the leading of the Lord in his life. And he doesn't receive this suggestion and criticize. He doesn't receive this suggestion and get jealous. He doesn't receive this suggestion and get upset. He receives this suggestion and with wisdom goes ahead and makes the application for it. He's a very humble individual. And when people come to us to give us Biblical suggestions and biblical counsel, we need to be attentive to that. I'm not saying that every person that comes to you and gives you biblical counsel and gives you biblical uh, suggestions 
And we're going to have, like you, it's a responsibility, it's a requirement that when a person tells you, you have to go ahead and apply it. I'm not saying that. It's up to you to have discernment following the Holy Spirit of God. But when people come and offer you biblical counsel, we should have a soft enough heart to say, okay, let me just hear what you have to say, right? None of us know everything. Paul himself said that he had not arrived, right? So none of us are maturely perfect and, and at the mature arrival place of spiritual maturity. We are all growing, and God uses people to encourage and suggest and counsel. So I'm just telling you, humility to be able to say, okay, let me listen to what you have to say. Go ahead and tell me, and then take your time to spiritually discern and see which way the Lord's leading if you want to go ahead and make that application or not. Each, we see, Moses is humble, and he's willing to listen and receive the counsel, this biblical counsel. Number two, not only is he humble enough, he listens. He listens. He doesn't say that I'm the leader. He doesn't say that I'm the master. He doesn't say none of those things. Look with me in verses 19 and 20. Verses 19 and 20. This is the father-in-law speaking. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that they may bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. So he's not just telling him to back off the thing. How do we say it today? Uh, right? I, I don't want that responsibility. I just give it to you. He's not saying get rid of it. What he's saying is get some helpers. <laughs> get some people that will support you. Go ahead and continue and teach the law. Go ahead and be involved in your calling. Go ahead and be the leader that God has called you to be. He's just get some in these situations. But you're still going to be the leader. You're still who's responsible for teaching, but now you're just going to have some helpers, some servants, can I say, willing to give the strength and the support that's needed. So he listens to this counsel, realizing that it is biblical counsel. The father-in-law didn't come and tell him, hey, your life's going to be better. Uh, you're going to be more famous. You're going to be more rich. Everything's going to be for you. He's saying, no, no, this is really going to keep you around here a little bit longer. This is going to help your life be extended, uh, that you will be able maybe more to strengthen and support other people by receiving this help. So he gets the counsel. He listens, and he's wise enough to be able to say, okay, this is biblical and Moses learned something here called delegation. Can we say sharing? Okay, he delegates what's going to happen. That was the suggestion. Look at verses 21 through 23. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Verse 22. Judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. He's learning about delegation. All of the responsibility is going to have to be on you. We're going to share this biblical burden. We're going to share this biblical work. We're going to share and all be involved in serving the Lord. And he says why in verse 23. Do this thing, and God commands thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all of this people shall also go to their place in peace. So sharing this burden, uh, saints strengthening other saints, is going to provide peace. It's going to provide support and help. It's going to provide encouragement. So he learns to delegate. We need to understand that we cannot do all of the work of the Lord alone. It takes multiple people. It takes all of us to be involved. Now, there's a requirement 
I don't say a qualification, but there's a criteria for the kind of people that are going to be involved in this thing. Um, well, let's just look at it. Go to verse 21. I want you to know something else before we read verse 21. He said there are going to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifty, rulers of ten. What I can tell you is that when the suggestion or counsel was given to Moses, the people of Israel received what Moses told them. In other words, he's going to have to pick a person and put him up and say, you're going to rule a thousand. And as he picks another person, he's going to set him up, and you're going to be a ruler of ten, right? Those men have to understand, under the discernment of Moses, who's uh, receiving the strengthening and encouragement at the same time as strengthening and encouraging them to, those two can't have covetousness or that jealousy or say, why has he got a thousand, why has he got a hundred? Why has he got fifty, why has he got ten, right? So those individuals themselves are receiving the, or the, are receiving the delegation from Moses and saying, yep, we understand and we agree, we're on the same page, okay? So obviously we're seeking individuals to be involved in that service also. It takes every one of us to have meekness. It takes every one of us to have that love for the Lord. It takes every one of us to see the big picture, to see that this is the work and the service for the Lord. And provide who's in the leadership position the opportunity to let them make those decisions that need to be made puts those people in place. And that's exactly what they have done. And here's why, verse 21. Verse 21. He's not just saying, Moses, you go out there and you find your favorite person and you pick them. You find the, the, the most popular person and you pick that person. Or you pick uh, this kind of person, right? He says there are some requirements or some qualifications for these individuals, and we find those in verse 21. The first thing that we see, he says right in the middle of the thing, such as fear God. So the father-in-law tells him, hey, we need some God-directed people, okay? The work is for the Lord. And when you decide to go ahead and put these people in place to serve, they, number one, have to be God-fearing. They have to have a, a reverence and a respect to God. They have to have a love for God. They have to realize that God's on the throne. They have to realize that God's in control. And they have to have a focus upon him. We're not just going to put the people in place that could ruin other people or that could influence other people uh, to go. People to say, well, God's the best, it doesn't matter. This is for my my. We're going to put those people into place. Find people that have a fear of the Lord. I'm not saying a trembling of the Lord. We're saying a reverence and a respect to God. You're God, and I know who you are, and I know that you're in control, and then I don't know if I get involved in some things, there's a punishment coming, but I also know that you're an all-powerful and merciful and mighty God, and he's looking for people he's going to put into place to help share this burden for the Lord that have, I'm just going to say, a heart for God. They're God-fearing people. They have a reverence and a respect for God. Why is that? So that they might judge justly. Can I say for today, they might influence or provide counsel according to Scripture, right? If I'm not a God-fearing person, then I'm not going to preach what I think is right or how I feel. A God fearing individual, I reverence and respect God, and I know and understand that the preaching from this pulpit needs to be from the Word of God. Why is that? Because it has to be God fearing. And if the individual themselves don't care about God, then they don't need to be put in place to burden that Moses is bearing. So he suggests we need to find some God fearing people, some godly people involved in this. The second thing he says is men of truth. Men of truth. These are not men that are trying to convince people, are not trying to deceive people, are not trying to get people on their team, 
right? Uh, what do we call that today? Yes, men. Right? We want people to say, whoa, 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 that is not according to Scripture. Hey, pastor, that doesn't, uh, there's no principle for that in the Word of God. What do you mean you're saying that? Or, teacher, you're just teaching something from the world. That is not coming from truth. We don't want people uh, sharing the burden and the work of the Lord that are liars, right? Or not involved in truth. Now here I believe what they're saying is that this just and right. They were able to make discernment. They're not able to be bribed. They're not able to be won onto their team. These are people that are in truth. They're truthful in themselves. And I also believe there's a principle that can be added uh, that we should be involved in the Word of God. So these kind of people are God-fearing, the truthful men, so that there will be a correct judge. And then notice what it says after that. It says, hating covetousness. They don't just say that covetousness is a sin. Covetousness is wrong. These people just that you need to pick to help share this burden need to be people that hate covetousness. In other words, there's no way possible, I understand without uh, the grace of God, but there's no way possible these people are going to come to them and say, hey, look what I have. Let me just make a, a simple application. Sometimes I hear about churches um, where people who tie the whole lot of money have a bigger say in the church. That could be involved in this covetousness. The pastor might say, ooh, well, if I compromise for him, then he'll stay. The finances will be there. Okay? We need people that are placed in charge that aren't covetous. They're not looking for something that they don't have. They're content therewith, and they're focused on the Lord, and they understand that God's going to provide. Why would that be important? Because these people are coming to them for judgment. Moses the fourth them. God knew that Moses and Moses himself had developed himself to be a place of covetousness. And now he's putting people in place that are going to take plates for him or that load or share that load with him. Therefore, Moses wants people that are sitting on these thrones of judgment not to be able for them to be, ooh, right? Looking for that money, looking for that fame, looking for that attention. So he says we're not just looking for men that dislike covetousness or understand that covetousness is sin. But we're looking for men that are content and hate covetousness. They're complete any unjust gain. They're not going to take advantage. They're not desiring things that are not there already given to them. So these weren't just avoiding, but it says they hated. And then the last thing we see in verse 21 is they have to be able to rule. They have to be able to be a leader. He says, after hating covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Now he's not saying that they're going to be kings and, and, and dictate and force them to. But they have to be men that are able to make a hard decision. They have to be men that are able to counsel big They have to be men that receive what he's saying and receive what that person is saying and then discern within their heart and their mind and look at the scripture and look at the law and look at the commandments and the ordinances and say, okay, it's a hard decision, but I'm going to go ahead and make this decision because I am working, serving the Lord, and Moses God placed me in this place to be a, a ruler. They have to be able to be leaders, leaders within that service. Lead in godly matters, evidencing that leadership. Can I say also willing to lead, willing to do that which is right, willing to help, willing to serve, willing to have a humility to be under Moses, who was going to receive the quote-unquote hard matters, Moses. So then who's going to be able to receive what the Word of God says as the easier or literal matters would be those men that have been placed in that position. So they themselves have to have that humility also and say, yep, I'm permitting you, Moses, to lead me. 
And then as you give me that information and you give me that, uh, and now I'm going to lead when they come before me. They also have to be able to say, ah, the matter that's a little bit bigger than me. Let's go ahead and bring that to Moses. So these weren't just, I don't know, these were people that had a specific qualification or requirement that was laid upon them that Moses would be looking for. So Moses was working hard for God. He was serving God with all of his life. And he hears this godly counsel, listens to it, decides, okay, now let's take some time and seek out some godly men to assist in the work of the Lord. I'm thankful that Moses was willing to listen. I'm thankful that Moses was willing to pay attention to this counsel, uh, accept the help of his father-in-law. And decide to move forward and receive the spirit. Why is that? Well, look with me really quick over in verses 26. I guess it wouldn't be verses, it would be verse, verse 26. So Moses goes ahead, receives the counsel, sets up these people. And they, the people who Moses chose and set up, judged the people at all seasons on hard causes. They brought unto Moses, but every small matter... They judge themselves. So as far as we know, according to Scripture, what happened? This was a successful process that Moses received, established that he himself would not get wore out and that there would be strength given to the nation of Israel. Think about it. Moses received strength and that, quote, unquote, his life would be extended. These rulers received strength as now they were leaders within that uh, uh, that ruling and that servicing of the Lord. And then the nation of Israel. Remember what he said. If you continue by yourself, they're going to get wore out also. These people are not going to be able to see all of these individuals from Moses to the rulers to the nation of Israel. Really, if you think about it, because one man wasn't scared to approach Moses and let him know what he had saw was recognized. And then Moses himself is in charge to receive that counsel and that suggestion and to go ahead and make a decision. And they were willing to submit to the leadership of Moses as well as receive the authority that Moses would give to them to make judgments in the matters of those people. And all of them Receive strength. All of them receive strength. Go to Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Before we look in Acts chapter 6, I just want to say my prayer is that we would not only be attentive. But also, if we're the ones in need, we'd be willing to go ahead and receive that help and assistance. That we wouldn't be stubborn. We wouldn't be hard-hearted. We wouldn't be too haughty-minded or too prideful. Sit down and say, okay, give me counsel. That's moving forward for the gospel of Jesus Christ and moving forward in our service of and if we're the other person that the people come to and tell us, uh, I'm sorry, if we see that, may we continue to provide biblical, I'm going to say that again, biblical suggestions, help, and counsel. Don't just criticize. Don't just um, always point out the negatives or the faults. Give some resolution and some solution, some help in the matter. In Acts chapter 6, here we have the early church of Jerusalem. We know that it's growing. It's huge. And there's some widows that haven't been aware of, and there's some complaining that's happening, and it comes up to the apostles. Pick up with me in verse 2. So when the situation pops up, verse 2, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God, and serve tables. 
Now the apostles really here, I believe, are saying, okay, this is the situation that we're going to have to be in with. We're not complaining. We're not saying it's good for us. But really what they're suggesting here is that if we continue in that, then it's going to quote unquote steal us from verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. So taking care of this situation that popped up, passing their time in prayer and the ministry of the word of God. They're not saying it's over them. They're not saying that we don't want to be servants. They're not saying that we don't want the job. Continue in that, steal from this. What they're saying is we need some help. We need some support. Okay. And so he tells them, or they tell them, or make the solution, the suggestion, or the counsel at that time, need some assistance or some strength from saints. And he tells them in verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So really what we see is an illustration of what happened in Exodus with Moses, right? He's running the nation of Israel. I understand that that's not a church, but he's running the nation of Israel. Realizes from his father-in-law that he is going to get wore out. Decides, yep, you're right. I'm going to humble myself and say, okay, give me the help that I need. Here we see this application in the church. There's a lot of things. The church is growing. They're missing some things. And they say, some support. We need strengthening from other saints. Therefore, find seven with some requirements. We're not going to uh, expound on them, but of an honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. Can we just say those that reverence, that are God-fearing, those that would hate covetousness, those that would be willing to be involved in the ministry and the work of the Lord. He says, you go and find people that are willing, I'll say surrendered and submitted to the work of the Lord. Four, so that there could be some strength provided for the widows. So that there could be some strength provided for the disciples to continue in the ministry and prayer. There could be some strength given to those seven men. They would now take up some of the responsibility to share the burden in the service of the Lord. And look at the result in verse 7. It says, And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and great company of priests were obedient to the faith. So by delegating, sharing, this burden, uh, helping, helping one another, what happened? It grew. The word of God increased. There were more disciples added. What's that mean? There were more people that were saved and that were focused on the teaching of the word of God. In other words, now instead of having 12, you had 19 people that are involved in helping with the support of the work of the Lord. Disciples recognized it, suggested it. The seven men would submit to the leadership of those 12 and accept the responsibility to move forward and help in the service of the Lord. And the result, more people got closer with the Lord. More people were walking with the Lord. More people were encouraged in the Lord. More people were strengthened. They were strengthened because of other saints. So the result of seeking help, the result of people suggesting help, the result of humbling ourselves to say, okay, you're right, thank you for the scripture, help me to discern in prayer, in making the decision to move forward with those suggestions or apply that godly counsel, the result of that would be a closer walk with the Lord, a stronger work. If this church only put all of the responsibility on one individual, imagine how reduced the work of the Lord would be, right? It takes one of us. I think the best illustration of that is if you were to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It takes every body part for this body to function, right? If you lose 
a finger or you lose a foot or you lose an arm or you, you can't lose a head, but or you lose a, a, a knee, right? You slow down. The, the work doesn't increase, it decreases, right? There's a struggle when the back hurts or the, the toes hurt or the legs hurt, right? You're not able to lift as much. So we understand this body needs every part to function at 100%, right? Apply that. First Corinthians does, applies that to the body of Christ, the church, the local church. It takes every one of you to be involved in the service of the Lord for this church to have the strength that it needs. How is that done? Saints strengthening saints. Saints, people that are saved, involved in the work of the Lord, sharing the burden. So if you notice the of too much, maybe you have that person. Right? Maybe you're that person that they come and talk to. Don't be offended. Don't be so hard-headed. Listen to what they have to say. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. Ask for discernment when you make the decision and move forward, right? Be that person who's full of the Holy Ghost. Be that person who has a fear of God. Be that person who's subjected to the authority of the Lord. Be that person who has humility and a willingness and a readiness. Moses and the nation of Israel saw a great because of that suggestion. Here we see the early church of Jerusalem would improve and increase in their work for the Lord. People would be saved. But all of that, why? The background of that or the point is that there were saints that were willing to strengthen other saints. There were people that were willing to support and help other people. That's what it came from. Us willing and ready and eager to encourage, to strengthen, to share the load one with another. Maybe you're that person that needs help. Maybe you're that person that recognizes another person that needs help. Maybe you're just that person that's ready to give that help, right? Seek out what the Lord would have you to do and get involved in the work of the Lord. Let us share the load of reaching this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us share the load of helping and supporting one another in this church here, right? And maybe we would see an increase in the word of God and an increase in disciples, an increase in people saved, an increase really in our love for the Lord and our spiritual maturity and growth, right? That should be our goal. May we be willing for that. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God. Lord, I'm thankful that the man that you chose, Moses himself, would not be so haughty and say, man, I'm in charge. I'm the master. I'm the boss. He didn't say that. He was sitting there talking with his father-in-law. He received the counsel and understood. He came to the, the, the conclusion of saying, you're right. If I continue this thing all day, I will get worn out. And there are other people, obviously, that fear God. There are other people that have a love for the Lord and that hate sin. There were other people that had some leadership quality traits within them because Moses chose them and set them up. The nation of Israel was able to move forward. Lord, we see in chapter 6 the same thing in the early church and surely an application for church today. They were able to find those seven people. They were able to find men that were full of the Holy Spirit, find men that were willing and eager to serve, men that were humble, men that would step up and, and do and be involved. And Lord, I know that there are plenty of men here at ABC and ladies that are here at ABC that have the, uh, the know-how and the, the ability to be able to support and help. So, Lord, my prayer tonight is that maybe there are people here tonight that say, yeah, I need the help or I'm the one that can help. And, Lord, then show us. Help us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Help us to see and recognize, to receive counsel or to give counsel, to have discernment and peace and be content. And, Lord, 
May you just encourage us at your church as we're challenged to encourage one another. May we, will, may we be willing to say we are a saint that's willing to strengthen another as a saint. Lord, I don't know the place of any individual here tonight, Lord. A specific thing, Lord, I just a message that you put upon my heart, and I know that there's truth. But Lord, maybe you're working on a person's heart tonight. And Lord, I just pray that they'd be willing to respond to that. Help us, whichever person we are, to receive it, to accept it, to believe it, to move forward. Lord, I pray that you bless the invitation. I pray that you just help us as a church, really truthfully, to just encourage one another, to be there for one another, to really be a Christian, one that loves the Lord and wants to be involved and share the burden and not be a person that wants to to hide or to divvy it out or to get rid of it, Lord, but we just say, hey, I'm here to help you to share this burden of serving the Lord. So you bless the invitation. You work on hearts as only you can. Help us to respond appropriately, we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, the altar's open. You can stay right there. Whatever the Lord's doing in your heart, go ahead and pray and let him go sing.